On November 1st, 2018, the Almighty has risen to throw us a freaking bone! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Void Interactive released a clip, and we're going to be milking it for everything that it has to the very last drop. So buckle up, because we're going to enhance the hell out of this little mini clip. So those of you that didn't see the clip, I'm going to go ahead and just play it for you right now. BCC to 10 David on TAC 1, prepare to copy emergency traffic. SWAT units 42 Adam and 5 David responding code 2 to rally on junction of Pilchard Street and Ferry Avenue, high risk warrant service. Now this may seem like nothing. But there is a gigantic amount of information if you dig deep enough. Me and the community, we found a bunch of stuff that you would otherwise not see with the naked eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the obvious stuff. The video itself is just over 13 seconds, and the first thing that we see on the screen is the text, Incoming transmission. Not only that, there is also a voice that's doing 911 calls, briefings, and other things that we can hear throughout this clip. If anybody has ever played SWAT 4, then you know that it's a welcome present to us all. Continuing on, the text goes away, leaving a black screen and then scene. Right away, you can already tell that it's very hard to see what's going on in this clip. It kind of sets a tone with the thunder and rain in the background. It has that Swap 4-like atmospheric feeling that you certainly would not get anywhere else. All right, moving on. As you can see, there is a compass at the top of the screen. Now, the developers have confirmed that the compass is an optional feature, so you're able to just flick it off and on. But what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that we are looking at a first person perspective. It gives us the impression that this is what we're going to be looking at when we finally get into this particular mission. Now in a recent podcast that I did with the community, there was a developer that was in here answering questions and somebody had asked what those two boxes at the bottom right are and he had expressed that this is the HUD. So the compass and those two little boxes at the bottom right are the HUD. This is all that you get. The boxes at the bottom right are your speed indicator, meaning how fast you're moving. All right, continuing on. Now I'm just going to play the video in slow-mo without stopping. You can see that he's moving by looking at the compass and you can see a little bit of distortion right here. It is really dark, but he comes up to what looks like a railroad cross sign saying that there's some kind of train nearby or maybe is that some type of station? This also lets us know that he has a light on and judging by the fact that it's not coming from his weapon, more than likely it's some type of flashlight that's on the helmet and then it looks like he looks over to the left and then we kind of get a glimpse of what he's holding in his hand it looks like some sort of pistol which might explain as to why there wasn't a flashlight coming from the weapon and then it goes to the ready or not logo all right that was the obvious stuff now let's enhance 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 so what i did is made the screen significantly brighter and you can also hear the lady talking in the background just a bit better so let's see what it looks like now BCC to 10 David on TAC 1, prepare to copy emergency traffic. SWAT units 42 Adam and 5 David responding code 2 to rally on junction of Pilchard Street and Ferry Avenue, high risk warrant service. So now that the screen looks a lot brighter, we can get a clearer picture. I also enhanced the audio so that you can hear what the operator is saying, but we'll talk about what she's saying later. So thanks to the enhancement, we can see what he's holding. He appears to be holding what looks like a Glock 19 with either a suppressor or a silencer. As he's walking towards the crossroad sign, you can see the head moving, which means that there is free look in this game. Before they had said that it wasn't going to be, but I remember them saying something like they were on the fence, but they stayed on it too long that it broke or something like that. And now it's in the game, so that's great to see. As he's looking up at the crossroad sign, faintly in the background to the very right, you can see some kind of building or a billboard, one of the two. I can't really see what it says on it or uh, if it actually makes out any words, but I thought that that was interesting. The ground that he's walking on looks a lot like mud, it's raining in the scene. Over to his right, it looks like there is a tipped over rail cart. I believe that's what you call that, I could be wrong though, hold on. These appear to be called rail side dump carts. Here's a better image of it. After seeing the rail cart picture, I'm not sure if the cart's off the rails or just tipped over, but this tells me that this area could be abandoned or that the workers never picked it up because pff, they don't pay me enough. But either way, those posts aren't supposed to look like that. The building that's in the background looks really familiar. That's right, Void Interactive keeps showing off this area, which leads me to believe that this could be the area where the trailer takes place. Now, I could be completely wrong. Maybe the trailer takes place somewhere else. Only time will tell. 
But all I'm saying is that there is a lot of pictures of this specific area if you go over to their Instagram, and they're the most recent ones. But anyways, the character looks to his left, and we see a lot of shipping crates, which at first I had thought that this was some kind of train station, but then looking at this, I'm like, oh, it's a shipping port. If we zoom in on the right where the light is, it looks like there's an entrance to some sort of garage. I have to wonder if this is an entrance that we can take, or if not, do we go around to the left? It looks like there's a tiny path straight forward underneath these uh, crates. Hmm, decision? decisions and that's about it for everything that's on the surface one thing that i have to wonder though is this really the start of the mission or is it like they put a voice over a random clip i guess that's another video to speculate about huh boys now we are going to go into the deep dive where the community found a lot of things for us to share <clears throat> this clip is the start of a fucking treasure hunt you heard me right the things that are going on in this clip are game theorist level of finding things so the first thing that we're going to do is take another listen to the voice operator and clarify what she's saying bcc to 10 david on tack one prepare to copy emergency traffic SWAT units 42 Adam and 5 David responding code 2 to rally on junction of Pilchard Street and Ferry Avenue, high risk Warren service. So there are a bunch of call signs in this call here. And I'm gonna try and see if I can clear them up for you. Code 2 means as quick as possible. 10 David, or the Lieutenant, is designated the SWAT commander responsible to the Chief of Police for the unit's activities. 42 Adam, from what I understand, is two officer patrol units. 5 David means SWAT. So I'm going to read this back again. BBC to the Lieutenant on Talk 1. Prepare to copy emergency traffic. SWAT units, two patrolmen, and SWAT units responding as quick as possible. Rally on Junction Pilchard Street and Ferry Avenue. High risk warrant service. So that clears things up as to what she's actually saying. But someone in the community went ahead and found the actual location that is Junction Pilchard Street and Ferry Avenue. This is located on Terminal Island. Terminal Island is a largely artificial island located in Los Angeles County, California, which according to the devs is where the game is to take place. Very interesting, Mr. Developer Man. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what's so special about Terminal Island? Well, it's a giant shipping port littered with shipping containers. We think that the map takes place around here, but we're not entirely sure as to where the map actually is. Although I think it could be in a specific spot that has a lot of mud. I don't think it's going to be too hard to find because the majority of the island is made out of concrete. Well, that was the first thing that the community found, let's move on to the next one. If you brighten up the clip and stop it at a certain time, look at the top right of the video video, you will see coordinates. If you type in those coordinates into Google Maps, it will take you to a Fort Macomb in Louisiana, and it looks abandoned. Fort Macomb is a 19th century United States brick fort in Louisiana on the western shore of Chief Mentor Pass. After realizing that the fort was made out of bricks, I realized that quite literally, we hit a brick wall, and this is where we thought the journey had ended. Until the word Carcosa came into play. Now why? Well, determined fans thought that Fort Macomb couldn't be the end of the story, so they scoured every account that Void had until they found something. Something very interesting. Carcosa. The word seemed out of place for a SWAT game, even though the word was always there on the account. But it always seemed out of place. So people typed in Carcosa, and they came up with this. Carcosa is a fictional city in the TV series True Detective. Further investigation found that Carcosa was filmed at Fort Macomb. So Fort Macomb is Carcosa. The episode that was filmed there was season one's finale, Form and Void, where they chase a serial killer known as the King in Yellow into Carcosa. And unfortunately, that's about as far as we've gotten so far. In the Discord, they created a new tab called Into Carcosa, where everybody's just trying to figure this out. It seems to be a war between Discord and Reddit to see who gets it first but it seems like both camps are stumped. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to go anywhere, but I thought that it was really fun going down this rabbit hole. And according to Easy Street, we haven't scratched the surface yet. And you know what? He's right! Because those Void accounts that I mentioned before have always had Carcosa tags. This bugs the living hell out of me now. <laughs> I wonder what happens if we solve it. You know what I find interesting? Is that a day before, Easy Street didn't know what we were talking about. He acted like he didn't know what was going on. And just before we ended the recent podcast, he had like a knee-jerk reaction. Like he was being told something and then he said this. Okay. Apologies for interrupting. Um, however, I, I need to leave. I am ill and lost. Um, direct me, I beseech you to Carcosa. You must!
monster frisbee! What the fuck did you mean? I enlist you, dear viewer. Help me solve this goddamn mystery. I'm gonna put a link in the description if you guys wanna read a transcript that's way more detailed than my video. I've been trying to solve this goddamn thing for the past three days. All right, well, anyways, I guess we can move on to the last thing here. When I downloaded the mini clip that Void released, I couldn't help but notice that the file wasn't named. Usually anything that I download from Void always has a name, but this one didn't. I found it to be extremely odd, but I didn't think too much about it because I was focusing on the previous rabbit hole. Luckily, I'm not the only fan of this game because others noticed this too. They figured out that it was a base 64 code, so they went to a website and decoded it and it says, Are you ready? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, Void Interactive? Am I ready? Oh, jeez. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I had a lot of fun analyzing the hell out of this freaking thing. I think the last thing that I'm going to leave you with is a couple of leaks. So here we go. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.